This is Derek Staley with ESFIWorlds.com, and I'm here with Breaky CPK. So first hey. of all, thank you very much for sitting down with us. So a large portion of our viewership obviously comes from other games, including uh, mostly from StarCraft. So for those of us uh, who don't know who you are, can you kind of explain to everybody who you are and how you got involved in Heroes of New Earth casting? Oh, well, uh, I'm uh, Nick Breaky CPK Karras. Um, I'm a shoutcaster for Heroes of New Earth, you know, similar to you got your, of course, Day Nines, Taste, Taste, Tasteless, Artosis, you know, all those guys. So I'm a shoutcaster, though, for Heroes of New Earth. Um, how I got involved with it, basically about two years ago at this point, um, so November of 2009, I think, really, I just started doing it on my own, just simply to actually get some experience for real work experience, because uh, I've been uh, training to be a sportscaster in real life, but it just so happened, you know, it kind of uh, worked out well, obviously, and uh, got some got a little bit of a fan base going, and all of a sudden, taken off to now, so uh, it's been a fun experience, a great ride, and uh, very humble that I'm uh, in this position, to be honest, so. So, obviously, uh, Honcast is very popular. Um... What do you think has been, you know, the the key to what you guys did that set you apart, and uh, has been the key to your continued success? Well, uh, as you mentioned, Honcast, that's part of the organization I'm from, of course. Um, as far as why it's successful, or really how it built up. Uh, um, a lot of it has to do with the dedication factor. A lot of it has to do with, you know, you, you can't get in this, obviously, to make money or anything like that. You have to be into this for, to be passionate and to really enjoy what you do. So. Um, a lot of that had to do with, you know, myself and the few, a few others that I was working with. Um, we were very passionate about what we were doing, and, uh, you know, our focus was simply, you know, for the advancement of Heroes of New Earth, for the advancement of the game, and uh, trying to get that esports and competitive side to it. So, you know, w with that mentality, you can definitely take it a long ways, and I think with the dedication factor, we've definitely been able to do so. So on the StarCraft side of things, there's recently been some controversy about uh, professionalism and the separation of duties and duties in regards to casters. And then you guys have also had some controversy uh, dealing with, you know, casters running tournaments and things like that. So yes. do you think there needs to be more defined roles uh, to avoid conflicts of interest? Definitely, definitely. Of course, uh, you know, you're mentioning there, and here's a new there has been some issues where I uh, myself, and uh, again, that goes back to me, just I, I want to do whatever I can to help advance the Heroes of New Earth community. But when it simply comes down to it, you know, there should be those defined roles especially with how big it's growing you know of course starcraft 2 i mean it is on a whole level of its own i mean it's there's deal there's talks you know of course with mlg and things like that of possibly getting into espn 2 i mean it's just really on a level of its own so especially for that it needs to have those really defined roles because you can't have them crossing over uh, there's definitely some conflicts of interest there and i think for heroes of new earth you know it, it's that way as well and uh i think it's safe to say for myself at least right now as much as i would love to you know be part of the admin the admining of tournaments and helping organize them and whatnot. Uh, for the most part, at this point, I'm just going to stick to casting because uh, I think that that's the safest route to go and uh, what makes the most sense right now. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, recently you guys were at DreamHack. Uh, yeah. Han had a pretty successful event at DreamHack. Um, a lot of people kind of seem to have already had the nail in the coffin in the game, you know, because of Dota coming out and things yeah. like that. But can you talk about the continued growth of the game, even with LoL being obviously hugely popular and Dota 2 kind of hype train building a little bit for it? Yeah, obviously there's that huge discussion in this uh, MOBA genre, as they call it. Um, you know, whether you want to call MOBA, arts, Dota, genre, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, Dota 2, League of Legends, and Heroes of New Earth, those are really the big three. Uh, as far as Heroes of New Earth, we are the small guys. Of course, we're the independent company in S2 games. So as far as that right there, you know, we're already, we're already a step behind, unfortunately. But um, that kind of goes back to the, the to the passionate stage, you know, the dedication. And as far as, you know, how we're going to compete with uh, – the, the bigger names you could say in Riot and of course Valve, you know, you just uh, you focus on the community really. You focus around the community. You focus on doing your thing, not worrying about the money that they're throwing around with a million, five million, whatever it is. Uh, focus on your thing, and obviously, you know, with that say, and, uh, as far as Heroes of New Earth is concerned, you mentioned DreamHack. We had the forty thousand, forty-five thousand dollar prize pool tournament last weekend. Uh, NASL finals that we're at right now, the forty thousand dollar prize pool, and uh, then we look into uh, Han Tour, which was just announced. Hontour.com. Um, hundred thousand dollar prize pool for a two month beta season, which is a uh, several events for from amateur players to completely high tier players. So Heroes of New Earth is really looking on a broad spectrum of all levels of play. Ultimately, with this Han Tour announcement, not just you know that top top tier. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm really excited for the future. I really am, and I know being a small dog, you know it's tough. It's been tough, but I definitely think uh, with the plans that we have in mind, the S2 Games has and Heroes of New Earth. Uh, because of the game and how successful it is, how great it is as far as a competitive game, it has a very good chance. So, right. So, in that same uh, that same kind of context, in a recent uh, patch, S2 added the in-game streaming enhancements, which are yeah. pretty incredible. Um, 
How much do you think that's really going to help build the competitive scene as far as viewership goes? Well, uh, I believe what you're referring to is, of course, Han TV uh, was just implemented uh, last week, I believe. Um, as far as Han TV goes, it, it, it's as you, it, it's basically an, it, it's an in-game stream. You know, it lets people know, of course, when Honcast is live and a couple of select user streams right now. Um, now, I want to be very clear with that said, you know, ultimately what it is and what people are making out to be, and what it is, is that it's just a browser and game, you know, it's just a way so you don't have to alt tab and uh, really it's for the casual crowd too, you know, it gets them interested in knowing that if they just have to click one button to all of a sudden watch a stream, it's a lot likely they're going to do that rather than, you know, alt tabbing, finding the website themselves and then watching the stream. So it's a step in that direction of trying to get more of the community involved ultimately. Um, I do want to be very clear though that just because, you know, this wasn't maybe the being able to join and watch live games spectating uh, doesn't mean something like that isn't in the works as well. So I want to be very clear on that, that because I know a lot of people, they thought Han TV, they thought Dota TV, which is, of course, what that accomplishes. So, uh, But yeah, you know, perhaps something like that is down the line. We'll see. But uh, I think Han TV has been a huge success so far. And uh, well, we're going to see how, where it goes in terms of pulling in that casual crowd. Right. So with that addition, S2 is obviously working in that direction to help build the popularity of uh, competitive Han. Yeah. So is there anything else glaring that you think really is uh, something that's a weakness that really needs to be addressed uh, in order to help build the community still? I mean, as far as a weakness goes, it's it, it kind of goes back to the mentality of, <laughs> and as much as I was trying to say earlier, obviously, you know, we just got to do what we do. We can't worry about what League of Legends and Dota 2 is doing, but at the same time, you have to a little bit, you know, when they are throwing around so much money and uh, as S2 Games, uh, being the independent company that it is, you can only throw around so much yourselves, you know. Um, Hopefully, you know, bigger prize pools, trying to at least somewhat compete a little bit more uh, with those, I think, would be the advance. But, but on top of that, you know, just getting more of these events, such as I mentioned, Han Tour, you know, getting getting a lot more of the community involved than just that top, top tier of, you know, 0.001%, whatever it is, of the competitive scene. You want to give it a chance because this, this genre in general, it is a very competitive genre. You know, it's five versus five. You have to rely on your teammates to be successful. You can't just go in on your own, for the most part at least and uh, you know expect to do well if your teammates aren't, aren't you know assisting you but um, so again back to Han Tour you know the idea being that it's going to be bring in not only that top top tier but it's at, you know John's uh, John's newbie team you know they can join and you know have some fun in the competitive atmosphere and uh, see what they can make of it and perhaps you know get more involved that way so so you mentioned that you look at the other games as far as what they're doing, you know, on the pro scene and things like that to yeah. kind of see what's going on. But do you also kind of look at it uh, from a gameplay perspective to see if there's anything that's kind of something they do well that you can kind of, you know, look at and say, oh, well, maybe that's a good idea? Or is it more of you just kind of focus on Han uh, internally and kind of do what you do? Well, of course, you, you, you always got to look at other games and, you know, see where they're successful at and see what, 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 what works for them. And um, every single game, you know, they, they take ideas from other games. It's just how it works with the gaming scene. So... Uh, but for the most part, I, I really do think, you know, it goes back to, you know, Han just needs to focus on Heroes and Newer. They can't worry, ultimately, about what other games are doing uh, in terms of, you know, these bigger prize pulls, these... Uh these uh, features that they're implementing, and but you know you you got you got features that are obviously uh, that were in Heroes of New Earth that uh, for League of Legends and stuff you know with the spectating and the replay feature for Heroes of New Earth right from the beginning making it very clear that they want to be that competitive game and then you know other games you know adding that as well so but games feed off of each other it's just how it works but I think more so of it for Heroes of New Earth at least it is just about focusing on Han so All right, get into the the gameplay a little bit there have uh, there have been some complaints about. You know, S2 constantly releases new heroes all the time, yeah. and uh, some players just don't really think there's uh, there's a perceived lack of proper balance. Let's put it that way. So, what are your thoughts on the the current strategy of releasing heroes and balancing the game? Right now, um, I think it's on a I think it's on a three week cycle right now. It used to be on a two week cycle. I think they did uh, later that by another week. So, um, but I still am a, I'm a believer that perhaps it is a little bit too quickly. Um, you know, again, going back to the genre in general, it definitely it needs to take time, and that's why with Dota, um, you know, there, there's that stable map version that they always have, and you know, when new heroes get implemented, there's still that stable version that that'll be had, and then you know, down the line, once it feels comfortable, you know, with several heroes that have been added and as changes have been added, then you know, maybe that will become the stable, but. Um, but at the same time, you know, from a business perspective, it's completely understandable. You know, they, especially now with them going free to play, having to deal with microtransactions, uh, that's it's what it takes to stay alive. And ultimately, you know, that's what Han needed to do. They needed to go free to play uh, to be able to compete in this market because microtransactions, simply put, is just where it's at, especially for this genre. So uh, it's unfortunate in that competitive sense. But at the same time, 
it hasn't been as much of an impact negatively as I think a lot of people have made it out to be from when it first happened. So, um, and we're getting to a point, I think there's something like 94 heroes out right now for Heroes of New Earth. You know, the, it, you're getting to a point where you're going to start reaching that cap level, you would think. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see where they go from there. Um, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see what, what ultimately ends up happening. But it's just, again, like I said, it's just how it has to be from the business perspective. So. So, as you said, there was some controversy with the free-to-play, obviously. Um, so a lot of the more hardcore players weren't too happy about it. Um, but how have you seen that impact the player uh, the player base as well as the game outreach as far as the competitive scene goes? Uh, as far... Excuse me there. Uh, as far as the uh, impact on the competitive scene, again, it kind of goes back to... Um, Really, honestly, it hasn't had too much of an impact negatively. I, I think, uh, but at the same token, it hasn't really had a positive impact either. It's kind of just been a neutral thing where, you know, our competitive scene is still just that. As far as, you know, the free-to-play bringing in these new competitive players that are playing at a top-tier level, I don't think that has been the case, you know. But, that, you know, looking at Haunter with an event like that where it's going to give those newer players that chance to perhaps grow with it, you know, maybe we'll see when, that's, when that eventually comes out. But... Um, as far as uh, the free to play and you know how it's affected things ultimately, I, I don't think it's a, it really has affected things too much. As, as I said, I mean, um, both in either negative or positive, it, it's kind of just been its own business deal. And I've always been an advocate before it was even happened. Han needed to go free to play anyways. Again, from that business perspective, it was just a necessity with this market right now. So, um, but yeah, I, I think it's it's been good in that sense that it hasn't negatively impacted it. So as you said earlier, uh, you took some classes in sports broadcasting and radio broadcasting, things like that. So how beneficial has that been for you uh, in, the, in the gaming side of things? And is that something you think you're going to see more commentators uh, in gaming do in the future? It's been very, very beneficial. I mean, like, like I said, it's uh, ultimately I never really thought about being a shoutcaster. I never thought about being, you know, where I'm at right now. It has, did not enter my mind whatsoever. I was just simply... Uh, uh, getting into it to just do ex get, get some experience on the side, you know, to to work for being a sportscaster. Um, but I've realized that the transition of uh, being able to take what I've learned and very little. I mean, it's not like I've been going to school for years by any means. It's only a matter of a year, year and a half. But uh, just in that little bit of time, you you learn a lot of things in terms of you know how to prepare for certain for casts that are coming up, how to work with a co-caster. Um, you know, where to make sure there's no dead air, you know, where to reach the excitement levels and whatnot throughout the game. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot, a lot, a lot to learn. still a lot for me to learn. And to kind of address your second question there in terms of uh, do I think it, it's something that should be more of a, like, standard for them coming in? Uh, not necessarily, to be honest. I mean, that, that's that's the great thing about the, the eSports community, the uh, the gaming community. I mean, um, it's still, it's very, very new. And, you know, when, when sports, you know, were first starting to get developed, it was kind of the same way. There weren't classes to, to learn how to be a sportscaster or, or be a, a media person. I mean, you just simply did it, and you, you, you grow up that way. So, hey, you know, it, it wouldn't hurt, but I'm not going to sit here and say it, it needs to be a necessity by any means. I mean, there's definitely a lot of very successful, in fact, most of them, and I don't think any of the top-tier StarCraft II casters have any sportscasting experience. And, you know, of course, they're, they're where they're at because of, uh, just simply their dedication and their love for the game. So, right. So, uh, as you said, you really did it originally to uh, get practice for sports. So, is that something, still something you kind of look at, or are you pretty much now content with just doing gaming? The th the thing with that is, uh, I'm still a big sports fan. You know, I love the NFL, I love NBA, I, I love sports in general. Um, but as far as like because of where it's brought me now, because of how successful it, it thankfully has you know gotten to me. Um, I, I wouldn't mind sticking with where I'm at, and you know, as long as it continues, I have no reason, as far as I'm concerned, because as long as, ultimately, as long as you love what you're doing, if you're a fan of what you're doing, then that's really what matters. So, and I can safely say that I, I really do love and enjoy what I'm doing right now. So, so in the gaming world, we have uh, some casters that only do one game. So, you know, you have a lot of the StarCraft casters that only do StarCraft, and then you have guys like DJ Weed who have done pretty much every game under the sun. Best job caster out there. <laughs> so, I mean, do you ever consider doing other games, or are you pretty much uh, planning on stick with on? I, I do. I, I always have. Um, StarCraft Two actually has been a, a game that I have even uh, touched a little bit on. Uh, I did do some casting for NASL this season, a couple of matches. I've I've done some on my own of my YouTube channel. I mean, it's something that I, I again, it's just being a fan of the game. If I find the time to be able to do it, I, I would love to do it, just because it's something that I, I enjoy doing. And um, you know, thankfully again that there is a fan base that at least it seems to be out there that does enjoy you know listening to what I do. So. Uh, because of that, you know, um, I would love to, but at the same time, right now my focus is 
is Heroes of New Earth, and uh, I have no reason to necessarily go out and go away from Heroes of New Earth unless, as long as there's a competitive scene here, as long as it's still going strong, and I, I feel very much so that it is, and it's only going to grow from here. So, All right, so thank you very much for sitting down with us. Uh, once again, for those who aren't familiar with you, tell people where they can find you and find out more about Han. Uh, where you can find me, I'm at uh, hauncast.com, Breaky CPK. Uh, that's our site. We got all our shoutcasts up there. We cover basically everything Heroes in New Earth, uh, competitive play. So, And again, with the Haunt Tour coming up, we definitely have a lot of big plans for that. Uh, as far as Heroes in New Earth, you know, www.heroesinnewearth.com. It is free to play, as we've been mentioning. You know, definitely check it out. And if you're already playing, hauntour.com. Definitely check that out as well. Go ahead and sign up and uh, get ready for a great event. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Thank you very much. No problem.